All right, guys, so we are going to be learning about uh, the first set of reactions in photosynthesis. All right, uh, now this gets a little complicated at times, so obviously feel free to pause this and uh, play things over again as you need to. And we're going to start talking about um, the light dependent reactions of photosynthesis. Okay, so take a minute, write down those pages from your book, and there are many, many, many different YouTube videos you can watch that can give you uh, different uh, perspectives on this and teach this to you. There are, and I'll show you a few of those in class. Again, use your textbook and we'll be practicing these ideas. Right now, though, we're just trying to get the information into your notebook, okay? So, <clears throat> this big dome-shaped thing here is the chloroplast. And if we haven't yet, we'll draw a picture of this and label all of the parts. But inside are these little stacks of these disks. These are called thylakoid disks. And as you can tell, we have two sets of reactions here in photosynthesis, okay? The first set is called the light dependent or just the light reactions, and they happen within these thylakoid disks, okay? As you guys could tell, this is where, let me get rid of that, um, this is where water gets used, and this is where oxygen gets produced. We make two forms of energy from the light dependent reactions. We make one which you're familiar with called ATP and the other is called NADPH. Those two energy molecules right here go outside of these disks to still in the chloroplast to an area called the stroma and that's where the Calvin cycle happens. The Calvin cycle is sometimes called the light independent reactions and that's where carbon dioxide is used as well as these two energy sources. So in the light dependent reactions, we took sunlight and converted it into these chemicals that contain energy. And again, we use CO2, and this is where our sugar is made. Okay? So that's where we're going sort of big picture with this. All right. The light dependent reactions, it occurs in those little disks called thylakoids. It occurs inside of them and across the thylakoid membranes, okay? So when we had those disks inside of the chloroplast, the thylakoid space is the area right in the middle. Remember, there'd be a big chloroplast around this. And the thylakoid membrane is that little blue line, okay? It's the area between the interior and then outside. That's the thylakoid membrane. The purpose of the light dependent reactions is to charge two energy molecules so that energy can be moved over to the Calvin cycle and used there. Okay, that's another way of putting it. We are taking light energy and converting it to two forms of chemical energy. I think of those like batteries. Batteries are a form of chemical energy. So think you're taking light energy and you're converting it into like a AA battery and a 9-volt battery. And you're going to take those batteries somewhere else and release their energy to power something else. Okay? And then I think you could probably skip this one. Okay, because that's what we're going to be talking about for the rest of this video. Okay, now how I'm going to run this video is I'm going to pop up a step of text. I need you to write that down, and then I'm going to switch over to a blank screen, and I'm going to draw that step. And we're going to keep kind of flip-flopping back and forth between here's a line of text, and here's what it looks like on a diagram. And that's how we're going to get through this. So first thing that happens, sunlight strikes a complex in the thylakoid membrane called photosystem 2. Now I'm probably going to go a little fast, so guys, please pause this um, you know, as you need time to write this stuff down. 
I'm just going to go a little quicker so the video is not so big and, you know, it's, uh, you know, 30 minutes long here. But please pause it so that you have a chance to write that down. And I'm going to go over to a blank screen and I'm going to draw what that would look like. Okay, so over here, I'm going to draw a big oval, and that is one of those thylakoid discs. One thylakoid disc. And these would be stacked up inside the chloroplast like, like a stack of coins or something like that. So this is our thylakoid membrane. And we have something called Photosystem 2. I'm just going to draw it just sort of like a box. And I'm just going to put PS2. Okay. And we said, we'll draw a happy little sun up here. Sunlight strikes everything, obviously. But Photosystem 2 is what can make use of that light that's striking it. Okay. Photosystem 2. Does a few things. One thing I want you to realize is that it contains pigments. Pigments are there to absorb light energy, and they focus that the photosystem too with its pigments focuses that all that energy from light absorbs it and focuses it on some chlorophyll molecules, which actually split water. Okay, so we would have water here inside, and the water would enter photosystem two. The light energy gets focused on it, and the water actually splits. And you guys know that's really hard to do because those H's are held on to that O with covalent bonds, which are, if not the strongest, one of the two strongest bonds in chemistry. And it splits it into these things two hydrogens with the electrons ripped off. The two electrons that came from each hydrogen plus an oxygen. So we've sort of blown up a water molecule. Now, this oxygen will diffuse out. It'll combine with another oxygen from another water and become oxygen gas. And that will go into the cell, either the palisade mesophyll cell or the spongy mesophyll cell. Because remember, we're inside of a chloroplast here. And then it'll go into those air gaps of the spongy mesophyll, lead between those guard cells of that stoma that we looked at, okay? So that's how that's going to get out. Now, these electrons are full of energy. So I'm going to draw like a little explosion around them. These are high energy. They have all of that energy from that light that's been focused on them, okay? So what happens is, these move to something, I'm going to draw it very cartoonish, called an electron transport chain. An electron transport chain is a chain of molecules, they're transmembrane proteins that sit across the thylakoid membrane, and they transport electrons. That's why they named it that, okay? Uh, what they do is this first one takes those two high-energy electrons. And what it does is it uses the energy to do some active transport, okay? So you're going to see in a minute that we're going to have a bunch of other hydrogen ions, these H pluses, just floating around out here. So what it does is it uses the energy from those high-energy electrons to actively transport these hydrogen ions inside, and it joins the two from the water, okay? Now, the two high-energy electrons get passed on to the next member of the electron transport chain, which uses some of the energy to do some active transport and pump more of these hydrogen ions inside of that thylakoid space. And then it goes to the next molecule. You guys get the idea. So we're actively transporting this. Eventually, these two electrons now have, they're at a low energy state. Their energy has all been used up to accomplish all of that active transport. Okay, 
So guys, let me go back to the text and pop that up for you because I did quite a few steps here so you can see. So guys, just take, pull your head back from your screen for a minute and just take a look at what's happened, okay? We had two electrons in photosystem two. They were energized and became high energy electrons and they were replaced by kind of blowing up a water, okay? So that the, the electrons came from the water. The oxygen leaves is oxygen gas, so it'll combine with another one. And you made these two hydrogen ions right here, which just stay in there with all these other ones for now. The two high energy electrons get moved through the members of the electron transport chain, which use the electron's energy to actively transport hydrogen ions, these H pluses, from outside the thylakoid to inside the thylakoid. Now, we use electron transport chains in our cells too. So even though you may never use photosynthesis again, the pieces that you see at work here, they show up in our body. So if you ever take anatomy or AP bio or a bio in um, college, this may all pop up again. Obviously we don't have photosystems and things like that in our cells. So that's what we've talked about so far. Okay, so guys, take a look at all of these steps. These are the captions to that picture. This is everything that we've written down so far, okay? The water splits to release one oxygen. Wait, I need to go back one more, so there we go. We said that sunlight strikes a complex called photosystem two. It's called photosystem two because it was the second one discovered. I know, it's a little confusing. Uh, it's not the first one in the sequence, but it was, you know, Sorry, it is the first one in the sequence, but it was the second one they discovered. So they named it Photosystem 2. Um, some stuff about Photosystem there, because there is a Photosystem 1. We're going to get to that in about a minute or two. We see that the solar energy is absorbed by those different pigments and concentrated on something called the reaction center of Photosystem 2. And that's where we see a chlorophyll called Chlorophyll A. We energize those two electrons, and it says, does photosystem two run out of electrons? Like I pause this if you need to. Well, no, it doesn't, because like we said, we keep splitting water in that photosystem two, and that keeps replacing those electrons, and we make, you know, electrons that replace the ones that left, plus those H pluses, and then an oxygen. All right, and then we had said the two electrons, they'll replace the two that moved on the electron transport chain. The H plus ions stay inside the thylakoid. The oxygen combines with another with some covalent bonds and diffuses out of the thylakoid, out of the chloroplast, into the spongy mesophyll, out of the stomata. Okay, now guys, I probably won't ask you this, but this is called the oxidation of water. In chemistry, whenever you lose electrons, it's called oxidizing, okay? So remember Leo, okay? So because water lost its electrons to this process, it's called the oxidation of water. Guys, again, pause this if you need to get this down. I'm gonna keep moving, just so like I said, the video isn't so large that you know it can't be viewed too easily. Okay, we, we put all this stuff on our picture. A series or chain of molecules within the thylakoid membrane called the electron transport chain move those high energy electrons from one place to another. They can also be called electron carriers. You might see that in your book. And we said as they move the electrons through the electron transport chain's molecules, through those electron carriers, the energy from the H plus ions is used to actively transport H plus ions from outside the thylakoid, that's called the stroma, to inside the thylakoid. So back to our picture. We're not done with these electrons yet. There is another photosystem. It's called photosystem one. It was the first one discovered, but it's the second one in the sequence. So you gotta keep that straight. Photosystem 1 is also struck by light. Now you guys know everything. You get struck by light if you go outside. But Photosystem 1, I'm going to put over here Photosystem 2 and 1, 
they both contain pigments that can absorb the energy from the light and do something with it. Okay? So photosystem one, what it does is it takes these two electrons, which are now low energy, and it excites them, or we can think of charging them, we'll say excites the electrons. So think about it, it's like a dead battery that you're now charging up. And it loads them onto a carrier molecule called NADP+. Okay, so NADP+, plus, plus the two high-energy electrons, they're like a little explosion around them. They become a molecule called NADPH. Guys, think of this as a battery. Okay, it is a fully charged battery. NADP+, plus is like a dead battery. Okay, think about your cell phone or your Chromebook, you know, this, when it's like, like that, and it's red and it's blinking on you, that's like NADP+, okay? How do you charge it? You load the two electrons that have just been energized by photosystem one, now it's a full battery called NADPH, we're gonna use that energy source in the dark reactions, also called the Calvin cycle, okay? Now, if you've been noticing, we are piling up all these H pluses inside this disc called the thylakoid. Positive things repel each other. They hate being packed in there. They just want to keep pushing and pushing and getting away from each other. Okay? So what happens is, we're like, okay, you want to get out? You can get out, but you have to do some work. There is a molecule over here called... ATP synthase. So think about it. Synthesize. It's an enzyme. It's got ACE on it, right? So it's an enzyme that synthesizes ATP. So these H pluses are allowed to move through here because they want to. I mean, they want to get away from each other. Okay. As they move through ATP synthase, they actually change the shape of it. They actually make it turn. Think about like a river going over like a water wheel, okay? And as it turns that wheel, you know, some work gets done. As these H pluses flow through here, uh, the energy that they create just by going from a high concentration to a low, um, what they do is it's enough energy to take an adenosine diphosphate, ADP, and make that third bond to the, the third phosphate and make it into ATP, which you guys know is a source of energy that we need. Okay? This hydrogen ions flowing through an ATP molecule is sometimes called, and I won't refer to it as this, sometimes it's called chemiosmosis. I've got to tell you guys, I have no idea why it's called chemiosmosis. It's not osmosis, it's not the movement of water. But that's the name it has, okay? So chemiosmosis, in case you see it, is this thing that we're talking about right here. It's um, hydrogen ions passing through and ATP synthase enzyme. We'll say enzyme complex. It's actually a pretty big molecule to um, attach phosphate to ADP to make ATP. And guys, that is the light dependent reaction to photosynthesis. Our goal, let me switch over to a highlighter here. Our goal was to take sunlight, do all these chemical transformations, and make two forms of energy, ATP and NADPH. So we took light energy and converted it into two forms of chemical energy. Okay, that's, you know, don't lose the big picture. 
So these are the light dependent reactions. Here's some of the captions. We said the electron transport chain delivered those high, now low energy electrons to photosystem one. Photosystem one absorbs light energy and recharges those electrons. Those two electrons, and I forgot to mention over in the picture, and one hydrogen ion from outside the thylak, because there's tons of them out there, um, get loaded on to NADP plus to make NADP. That's where the H came from. It's one of those. Okay? So you have two negative electrons, and then you have two positives. You have the, the H plus here, and then there's the plus here. That's why it's a neutral molecule. Okay? And I'm not sure I'd ask you this, but just in case you come across it, NADP plus is said to be reduced. Remember we said losing electrons is oxidation? I always remember Leo the gerbil. Gaining electrons is called reduction. Okay, so because NADP plus gained two electrons, it gained electrons, we say it's reduced. And that's all that means in chemistry. If you gain electrons, it says that you've been reduced. If you lose electrons, it says you've been oxidized. Again, pause this if you need to. Information about ATP synthase. It said um, those H plus ions keep accumulating in that thylakoid space. Inside the thylakoid becomes very positively charged. They have all those H pluses. Outside the thylakoid becomes more negative because... Uh, you keep pumping the H pluses away from there. ATP synthase allows those H plus ions to flow through it. And they go where they want to go. So pause this if you need to. And H plus ions pass through the ATP synthase. <clears throat> the energy created is used to convert ADP and phosphate to ATP. Again, we call that chemiosmosis. And we talked about this. The purpose of light-dependent reactions convert light energy into two forms of chemical energy. All right. So, guys, that was a lot to take in. I do not expect you to have it. Um, I don't expect you to understand it yet. Just right now, it's in your notes. We're going to practice these ideas and talk about them a lot. So if you have any questions, please write them down. So remember to ask me them. As always, the video, you can go back and rewatch any parts that you need to.